Unit 2 is all about linear inequalities and linear equations. We're going to start by talking about solving and graphing linear inequalities in one variable. You'll notice for all four of these graphs, we're always going to have an x compared to some number. And the number is found by the circle or the dot. So for example, on A, it's a 1, 1, negative 6, and a 4. Here, the part of the number line that's shaded is greater than 1. And 1 has an open dot, which means it's not included in the solution, so we just leave it as greater than. Here, the number line is shaded below 1 or left of 1, less than 1. And the, the point 1 is colored in, which means it's included, so we put a line under to indicate that it could also equal 1. C, it is shaded above 6 to the right of 6, greater than 6, negative 6 rather. And finally, greater than or equal to when we solve we're going to solve just like we solved linear equations back in unit one except we're also going to have to remember that if we multiply or divide by a negative we flip the inequality symbol on the first one negative negative is the same thing as plus so to solve I need to subtract one from both sides and I'm left with X greater than negative 3. So on my number line, I'm going to put an open dot on negative 3. Oops, that was not the right dot. <laughs> an open dot on negative 3. And I want to shade greater. See how this symbol is pointing to the right and this arrow is pointing to the right? So I'm going to shade that direction. Number six, I need to subtract 3x because I'm trying to get my variables together. I'm left with eight less than or equal to x. Now I like my letters on the left, my variables on the left side. So I want to just flip this entire thing over. And when I do that, the inequality symbol flips over as well. So x is greater than 8, or equal to 8. So I'm going to put a closed dot on 8. We're going to shade to the right. Number, se number 7, we're going to add 3 to both sides. n is greater than or equal to 0. Closed dot on 0 shaded to the right. I'm going to subtract 4 because I'm trying to isolate y. I get negative 2 is less than negative y. I need to divide by a negative 1 to get rid of this negative symbol and when I do that the inequality flips. But if you recall I prefer to have my letter on the left so the symbol is going to flip again. I'm going to put an open dot on 2, and I'm going to shade less than. Number 9, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. In other words, I'm going to take away fifths because that's the same thing as 3 and I get negative 13 fifths. That's approximately, well it's actually equal to 2 and 3 fifths when I change that. 
So two and three, negative two and three fifths will be about here. So I'll put my open dot here and I want to shade to the right. A little bit further. There we go. I'm going to start by adding three fourths to both sides. So on the right side, the three fourths cancel. On the left side, I need to make like denominators or use a calculator. Four twelfths and nine twelfths makes thirteen twelfths. And then finally, I need to divide by negative two on both sides. That's going to cause my symbol to flip. And when I do 13 twelfths divided by negative 2, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, which gives me negative 13 or 24. All right, so we ended up with negative 13 over 24 is less than or equal to x, which makes me flip back to get x on the left. That's approximately negative half, right about here on the number line. And then I'll shade to the right. The next topic is calculating slope, x and y intercepts. To find the slope, I'm going to begin with my y values. And I'm going to subtract them. Negative 9 and 6. Then I'm going to drop in my x values on the bottom, which gives me negative 15 over negative 5, which is 3. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to start with my slope formula. I'm going to mark my y's and then I'm going to drop them in. 3, 3, 1, negative 5. Do you see when I put a negative 5 next to something that already had a negative? I just canceled it out and made it positive. When I simplify this, I get 0 over 6, which is just 0. And that's my answer. We can also find slope by finding two points on the line and counting the rise over the run. So we rise one, run two. The slope is one half. The x-intercept is going to be right here where it crosses the x-axis, which would be the point two zero. The y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, which is going to be the point zero, negative one. This looks like a nice point. This is a nice point. I'm going down three, right two. So that's my slope. My x-intercept is right there at the origin, zero, zero. And same with my y-intercept. My slope, I'm going to rise 2, run 1. So 2 over 1 is just 2. My x-intercept is at negative 2, 0. My y-intercept is 0, 4. Right up here. Let's graph. Let's work backwards. Instead of having the picture, we have the equation. When we do this, we're always going to begin with B, which is the y-intercept, and then we're going to move M, which is the slope. If you recall, the y-intercept is always the number by itself. 
B is by itself in our line, when we're in slope intercept form, that is, y equals mx plus b. The slope is always the coefficient of the term with an x. So here, to graph this line, I'm going to begin with b, which is negative four, that's my y-intercept, and now I'm going to move negative two, that means go down two, right and one. And you'll see that I'll create a line right here. Let's draw this line in. Making sure that it goes through the entire graph. Let's try another one. I'm going to begin with B and I'm going to move M. So if I begin with five, that's one, two, three, four, five on the y-axis, and I'm going to go up one, right two, over and over. Notice I can also do the opposite, go down one, left two. That'll continue the line to the left. And then I connect my points. When we're graphing inequalities, it's much the same, except we have to shade when we're finished, and we have to consider if our line is going to be solid or dashed. And I'm going to begin with my B value and move M, begin at negative four, and I'm going to go down one, right two. that'll fill in my line. So, so far nothing's changed from the examples we just did above. The difference is this is a less than symbol, which means we want a dashed line. So I'm gonna go back and make it dashed. I prefer to make a solid line and then go back and make it dashed afterward. I think it keeps it a little straighter than trying to draw a dashed line. Now we want to shade. When it's in slope intercept form, you could think of it as shade lower than the line, shade beneath the line, which would be right here. You can also use a test point to check which part of the graph to shade. And there you have it. This next one's a little different because we need it in slope intercept form to graph. We need to get y by itself by dividing by negative four. When I do that, I get y by itself. My inequality symbol flips. I have negative one half x plus one. So I'm going to begin with one and move negative one half. Down one, right two. Or up one, left two. Connect my points. This is a dashed line again because it's strictly greater than. So I'm gonna grab my eraser and dash my line. Even when I'm using paper and pencil, I prefer to draw a solid line and go back and dash it with my eraser. And now we need to shade. It says shade greater than the line. So that's going to be this region above the line. There we have it. Again, we need to get y by itself by adding 10 to both sides and dividing by five on both sides. When we do that, we get y 
is greater than or equal to 2 fifths x plus 2. I'm going to begin with b, and I'm going to move m up to right 5, or down to left 5. Connect these points. Like I overshot the bottom just a little bit. There we go. Next, it's a solid line because it's underlined and I want a shade greater than the line, shade above the line, which would be this region right here. Let's write an equation in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form, if you recall, is y equals mx plus b. y equals m, what's m in this problem? 4x plus b is the y-intercept, but I don't want to put plus negative 3. Plus negative is the same as just subtract 3. We never want to have two signs. One symbol in between each term is plenty. Same thing here, y equals m, uh-oh, we don't know the slope, but we can find the slope because we know two points. So I'm going to drop the y values in first, one and four, then the x values on the bottom. Notice the negative one changed that to a positive one gives me negative 3 over 6, which reduces to negative 1 half. So I do know my slope, and I also know my y-intercept. Now we just have two points. It's getting harder and harder with each problem. We know we need to find the slope, so let's do that first. Let's drop our y's on top is on the bottom, which gives negative 2 over negative 2, which is 1. That's our slope. The y-intercept is the point on the y-axis, and this point right here is the y-intercept. So we know our equation would be y equals 1x plus 6. I don't have to put the 1 here because it's implied. Now we have directions to put it in slope-intercept form, but we're given a point and a slope, which means I want to start with points x minus x. I know the slope is 1 8 because it's provided in the problem. And then I'm going to drop this point in. My y value is 0. My x value is negative 4. So y equals 1 8 x plus 1 half when I distribute the 1 8th. And that's my answer. Now I've been given a picture. Y equals, let's figure out the slope. I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I go over 1, 2, 3, 4. And my y-intercept is right here, and that is the point negative 3.